In front of me, I have two very popular home espresso machines at similar price points whose spec sheets look very similar on paper. So my job today is to help you determine which one's gonna be best for your situation. Before we get going, I wanna make it very clear that I purchased both these machines with my own money, and this video is not associated with Breville or DeLonghi. If you wanna check out either of these machines, I will have them both linked down in the description below. Starting off with the design, I think these are both very good looking machines. With the DeLonghi, you get a more classic looking design out of Italy. The Breville, on the other hand, has a more rounded off and modern appearance, utilizing a digital display instead of the primarily button-driven interface on the Prestigio. One thing I didn't love was the amount of fake chrome used on the DeLonghi. If you're going to use plastic, just let us know it's plastic. However, purely based on the looks, which one you prefer is going to be totally subjective. So let's move on to some more quantifiable differences. Both machines have about the same depth, but the DeLonghi is 3.1 centimeters wider and 3.4 centimeters taller. Both have two liter removable water reservoirs and around 250 gram capacity hoppers. The drip trays both have good capacity with indicators to tell you when to empty them, but the Breville also has a handy storage compartment hidden in behind. Both machines have a grinding cradle, single group head, hot water spout, and steam arm, but the DeLonghi also has a foldable tray for shorter shot glasses and a built-in tamping station that we'll get into a little later on. One final difference I'd like to point out is that the DeLonghi has a removable power cable, while the Breville's can retract into the body, which is a nice touch. Moving on to the actual build quality, there are once again some similarities, but also some differences. Both of these machines have primarily metal bodies, while the knobs, switches, and adjustments are mostly made of plastic. However, I am going to give the edge to the Breville in this department. Things like adjusting the grind setting, starting the grinding, and locking in the portafilter just felt a bit sturdier and more refined on the Breville machine. A good example of this is in the portafilters themselves. The DeLonghi's feels quite hollow, has a fake chrome end cap, and is still doing some odd manipulation of how the flow exits through these stubby spouts. Whereas the Breville's feels more substantial in the hand, has typical real portafilter spouts, and has a stainless steel end cap. The same can be seen in the filter baskets themselves. The Breville's feels like a standard filter basket you'd find on any other espresso machine, whereas the DeLonghi's has a very thin, kind of unusual looking top rim. One thing that is in the DeLonghi's favor in terms of build quality is that they're currently offering a three year warranty on these machines, where Breville is only offering two. All right, moving on to the actual user experience, both of these machines warm up extremely quickly, like instantly thanks to the type of heating system that they both use. The Barista Pro technically takes only three seconds compared to the DeLonghi's 30, but unless you're just trying to get hot water for something like tea, you're still gonna need to grind the beans and tamp, so 30 seconds is plenty fast enough. Speaking of grinding, at least from a workflow perspective, the DeLonghi takes a pretty clear win in this area. I have always been a fan of this self-contained grinding cradle and tamper because it almost completely eliminates the mess without any additional accessories. With the Breville, I consider buying either a dosing cup or a dosing funnel to be non-negotiable. Trying to grind straight into the portafilter is just unacceptably messy. The Prestigio is also featuring what DeLonghi calls sensor grinding technology, which not only lets you know when the hopper is getting empty, but is also supposed to help with dosing accuracy. And while I didn't think too much of this when I read it on the box, in practice, I was getting really consistent doses with the Prestigio, like really consistent. One odd thing I did notice about the DeLonghi hopper is that if you want to change out the beans, say from regular to decaf, there is no good way to do this. Removing the hopper will cause the beans to come pouring out of the bottom, filling up the mechanism. So you'll then have to scoop and vacuum out the beans in order to be able to reattach the hopper. On the Breville, and most other grinders for that matter, the opening gets blocked when you unlock the hopper. So you simply twist, lift, and swap out the beans. Next, we have the user interface itself, where I was honestly quite disappointed to see that DeLonghi hasn't made any changes from the previous La Specialista generations. The buttons and vague icons are simply not intuitive, and you'll definitely be referring back to the user's manual on a regular basis for anything other than the most basic of functions. For example, take a look at this page describing how to work the settings menu. 
In comparison, the Breville has limited buttons for the main brewing functions that you'll use every day, and the rest of the functionalities are accessed through one dial that controls the display. It will also clearly alert and coach you through any regular maintenance, such as cleaning and descaling cycles, instead of leaving you guessing what this means on the DeLonghi. One final advantage that is in favor of the DeLonghi is the ability to make drinks with added water with only one button push. Selecting an Americano will pull a shot of espresso and then dispense the desired amount of water automatically. On the Breville, no such option exists. You'll need to pull a shot of espresso and then manually add the water using the hot water knob. I know it sounds like a super small inconvenience, but if that's a drink you make on a regular basis, this is a really nice feature to have. So as you might be able to tell, from a user experience standpoint, this one ends in a bit of a draw. You'll have to decide which of the items mentioned are most important to you. This brings us to the most important stuff, the actual espresso and drink making performance. And there's quite a bit to unpack here, so buckle in. With the Prestigio, DeLonghi has transitioned the La Specialista range to using non-pressurized or single wall traditional espresso filter baskets which is a move that I am 100% in favor of and is something that is honestly a necessity if you're going to be charging as much as they are for this machine. The first thing that concerned me about this change is that they didn't update the grinder to go along with it. It still only has eight stepped grind settings. Espresso takes very fine adjustments to dial in properly and compare that to the 57 different grind settings that you can achieve between the internal and external settings on the Breville and you can start to see my reason for concern here. The second thing that starts to come into effect with non-pressurized baskets is having good puck prep and that grinding and tamping chute that I like so much is not exactly conducive to that. After the grinder has stopped, you have no opportunity to redistribute the grinds before tamping, which can lead to a hugely uneven puck and therefore uneven flow. When tamping right away, the shots came out tasting similar to pressurized portafilter shots. Okay tasting, but slightly watery with extraction sitting around the 16% mark. The workaround for this is to grind, remove the portafilter, redistribute, turn off the machine so that it doesn't try to grind another dose when you put the portafilter back in, and then tamp. Or you could buy an aftermarket tamper. Either way, when using one of these workarounds to achieve better puck prep, I was able to increase the extraction by another percent up to around 17%, which is starting to enter into a respectable range. However, this is still significantly lower than the 18.5% I was able to achieve on the Barista Pro. And I think there are a few reasons for this. One, the Barista Pro uses a slightly larger 54 millimeter filter basket. Two, I was able to dial in the grind more accurately. And three, the Barista Pro runs at a traditional nine bar pressure at the group head. All of these things lend to getting a more even flow and higher extractions. But what does all this mean in terms of actual taste? It means that the Barista Pro was able to produce balanced, full-bodied shots of espresso with a variety of different roasts, whereas the Prestigio trailed slightly behind in terms of shot quality and is really best suited for medium to dark roasts due to the limited grinding range. Moving on to the milk steaming capabilities, these are both impressive machines in that they have virtually no wait time between brewing and steaming like you would get on most traditional single boilers. After brewing, both machines switch in a matter of seconds to producing steam. Both steam arms are on ball joints, but the DeLonghi's is still quite restricted in its movement compared to the Breville. I actually wasn't able to achieve the nice 45 degree angle, which you often hear recommended for milk texturing. In terms of speed, the Breville was significantly quicker, taking only 35 seconds to steam up to 60 degrees Celsius versus the 55 seconds it took to accomplish the same task on the DeLonghi. So after all that, where does this leave us? And which machine should you buy? I think that the DeLonghi La Specialista Prestigio has some extremely clever features, such as the sensor grinding technology, the dynamic pre-infusion, and the integrated tamping station. However, I think some basic oversights stop it from truly being a great machine not being able to remove the hopper without spilling beans everywhere, a somewhat confusing user interface, not being able to redistribute the grinds before tamping, and only having eight grind steps with non-pressurized baskets. 
These things all combine to make a user experience that leaves something to be desired, and more importantly, coffee quality that trails noticeably behind the Breville. I do wish that the Breville had some of these features from the Prestigio. However, in terms of what matters most, espresso quality, fine tuning capability, steaming power, intuitiveness, and quality feel, the Breville Barista Pro is still the all-in-one machine to beat in this price range. Again, I will have both these machines linked down in the description below. If you've enjoyed this video, please leave us a like, and even consider subscribing if you want to see some more like it in the future. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.